Okay, in today's video, we're gonna talk about a couple of things. One, just what's going on with myself uh, this week and what I've been working on. And two, we're gonna talk about what's going on in the news. I'm gonna try to keep this a shorter video so we can get some, some lot of great value and a lot of great information. And just really excited about these videos. So let's hack at it. Okay, so let me first thank you so much for watching my video, uh, subscribing, all the new subscribers. If you're new, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. I'm just watching the growth of this the, the community. Uh, I wanna thank the members on Peerless uh, for commenting, sharing my, vi my videos and my content. Uh, I just really wanna appreciate it. So I got two asks from you. One, comment below, let me know how I can make these videos better for you. Uh, what information, what research you'd like to see, just different things. Let me know. I'm going to do my best to provide as much value as I can. Second, if you have any family and friends that are interested in cybersecurity, business, protecting themselves, uh, cybersecurity awareness, share these videos with them. Tell them to subscribe and follow me because I'm, I'm going to do my best to provide as much value and information to help people protect themselves as they're going throughout their day using their technology. So I just want to say thank you so much. I'm just so grateful for, you know, you following me and for all the support that you've been giving me. So what's going on with me? This Thursday I'm speaking at DEF CON uh, Toronto. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, studying is going well. Linux, Python, as well as penetration testing, really going well. I find with the pen testing, it's blue team, red team constantly. Right? Today I was learning about uh, uh, DOS attacks on a DNS server and that was really interesting in the sense of you have to know the routers and the switches and how they're connected and you know the topology and then how you would which tools you'd use for a denial of service attack so oh before I get too deep into that I just want to say this anything I talk about when it comes to penetration testing security anything along that line it's for use of ethical hacking penetration testing to help protect yourselves in an ethical way. That's the only reason why I'm doing these videos. Any other use of this content or uh, any of the strategies, anything I talk about, any of the pen testing tools, if you use it in an unethical way, a black hat way, anything along that long, I do not support that that's not what these videos are for. So I just need to put that out there. Uh, I just know legally and waivers that I don't want someone going, oh, well, Brandon showed me how to do this one thing and then I you know, I breached this company. No, that's not what it's for. This is for penetration testing to help companies to be more secure, to improve the cybersecurity world, the IT security world, and, and just be part of the community to help, you know, grow, you know, IT security. So that's what these videos are for. So just want to put that out there, just a legality, just because as you know, sometimes uh, people might use this in an unethical way. And I just want to say, I don't support that. So Really excited about what's going on in the news. There's a lot of great information today. So let's get over to the news. Okay, so I have two articles I want to talk about. The first one is uh, from the Hacker News. Uh, it's the scam, alert, you, uh, scam, the scam alert. Scam alert. Your trusted friends can hack your Facebook account. So if you receive a message from any of your Facebook friends asking for urgent help to recover their Facebook account, since they've added you as one of their trusted contacts, just don't blindly believe it. So let's talk about what that is. So in Facebook, they have different ways to recover your password. They can text you a, a secret code. You can have a password reset to yourself. Uh, and then the other one is, is that you have contacts. If you pick three of your closest contacts, they'll send a, a secret code to them. So this is the, the, the vulnerability that they're talking about. So researchers have, found, have detected a new Facebook phishing scam that can even trick an experienced technical user into falling victim to the scam, helping an attacker gain access to Facebook account. The latest social media scam is abusing trusted contact, a Facebook account recovery feature that sends secret access codes to a few of your close friends in order to have to help you regain access to your Facebook account in case you forget your password or lost access to your account. According to Public Security Alert uh, published by Access Now, the attack initiates, initiates by an already compromised account of one of your friends asking for urgent help to get back into his or her Facebook account. The attacker explains that you are listed as one of his or her trusted contacts 
on Facebook and ask you to check your email for a recovery code and share, the, the, share with the attacker who's hiding behind the identity of your friend. However, in actual, the code you receive is not the key to unlock your friend's account, but instead the, the attacker initiated forgot my password request for your account and, and an attempt to hijack your Facebook account. So let me read that over so you can get that. So what happens is the hacker right, has initiated the password reset for our account and says, you know, hey, check your account for the, the code and then send it to me. So however, in actual, the code you receive is not the key to unlock your friend's account, but instead the attacker initiated forgot, initiated a forgot your password request for your account in an attempt to hijack your, your Facebook account. Knowing that a friend is in trouble, apparently one would share their code without giving a second thought. So you can kind of see this as a technical uh, compromise as well as social engineering. They're manipulating people's innate personality to help their friends. So they're, they're manipulating that so that someone will go, oh my God, yeah, John, don't worry, I'll reset it. So and then here's kind of a kicker, right? What we don't do as people, as individuals, Customers are busy. We're not really kind of thinking. We don't call if John contacts us or the hacker, you know, with John's account contacts us and says, "Hey, John, this is John. Can you re can you send me the code?" And we kind of go, "Okay, yeah, don't worry about." It. We don't go and call John and say, "Hey, John, did you just message me? Right? Are you okay? Like, what's wrong with your Facebook page?" And then in this scenario, John would go, "I'm at work. I'm busy. Well, I'm not on Facebook. I didn't message you." Uh oh, okay, something's going on. Now, what we have to be mindful is John's account might have been compromised or someone might have said a, uh, a dummy account looks exactly like John, has John's uh, profile image, has his you know banner page or banner image, has his content in the bio, his address. They might have copied everything, so it's a mimic of his profile. So John's doing that. You're thinking, oh, that's John, of course. But we're not doing that research to kind of go, okay, is that really John? And we're not going from online to offline to confirm this. And that's what I recommend. If something happens like that and you're not sure, even if you're not sure, like you should tell your friends, if they're your, your close friends, you should have not only just, hey, can you send me your password, but here, just so it's confirmed to me, have a secret code, have a secret you know, passphrase that you guys know amongst the other that you don't share online, you don't do that, you talk it on the phone, and then when that comes up, maybe you, then you share it out saying, you know, you know, I'm just trying to think of like Guitar Heroes, you know, and they're like, oh yeah, Guitar Heroes, okay, yeah, it is John, okay, here, here, let me get the code, where someone's saying, okay, um, can you do that for me? And you're like, okay, what's the secret password? And he's like, okay, what's well, the code that I'm sending you? No, no, what's our secret password? And they're like, you know, whiskey kittens. And you're like, okay, no, that's not it. Sorry, this is not John. And then you can call John and say, hey, John, something's wrong with your account. So some strategies on just how to get around that and just be very, very mindful. And please share this out with your family, your friends, the people you know, because so many people on Facebook will, will get compromised because of this because just maybe not paying attention, right? And they're not aware of this. Second article, uh, hackers use new flash zero day exploit uh, disrupt dispute, uh, sorry, to dispute Finn Fisher spyware. Finn spy, uh, the infamous surveillance malware is back in infecting high profile targets using a new Adobe Flash zero day exploit delivering through Microsoft Office documents. Security researchers for Kapersky uh, labs have discovered a new zero-day remote code execution vulnerability in Adobe Flash, which was being actively exploited in the in the wild by a group of advanced persistent threat actors known as Black Oasis. So far, Black Oasis has targeted victims in various countries, including Russia, Iraq, Afghanistan, Nigeria, and the list goes on. Uh, the new report flashes uh, Flash zero-day exploit is at least the fifth zero-day that Black Oasis group exploits since June 2015. The zero-day exploit is delivered through Microsoft Office Docs, particularly Word, attachment to a spam email and embedded with the Word file includes an ActiveX object which contains the Flash exploit. The exploit deploys the FinSpy commercial malware as the attacker's final payload. Uh, FinSpy, also known as FinFisher, has extensive spy capabilities and on an, effect, on an affected system. 
including uh, secretly conducting live surveillance by turning on its webcam and microphone, recording everything the victim types on the keyboard, uh, intercepting Skype calls, and exfiltrating of files. Uh, to get into Target's system, FinSpy usually makes use of various attack vectors, including spear phishing, manual installation with physical access to the affected uh, device, zero exploits, and waterhole attacks. So, some things that I've just been thinking about, and I'd like to hear your comments below. Uh, one, make sure you have a patch management program in place. With all the applications that are out there, this is common that there's vulnerabilities in these applications. And if you don't roll out the patches in time, a lot of, the, from what I've been reading and, and watching online, hackers are taking advantage of the window, the patch management window, where someone knows about an exploit, the company has sent out a patch, but in between that window when it's actually deployed, could be a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple months, hackers are actually going in there and trying to compromise many people's again because they know with patch management sometimes there's a larger window. Uh, second, uh, any system that you're using, doesn't matter who you are, encrypt your files, especially confidential, personal identifiable information, financial, legal records, business records, business documents, encrypt them. If they're in transit, in storage, encrypt them, right? Make sure they're encrypted to protect them. It's just another layer of security, right? And by doing that, what happens is if they breach your system and then they try to get access to your files, it's another layer that they have to overcome, right? Now, if the files are just stored in normal uh, format, Word as an example, Word documents, Excel, uh, numbers, pages for... Uh, Apple, but anything along that line, if they're just in their plain format, they can take those documents and they can run with them. But what I would say is if you have any of those labels or categories that needs to be protected, make sure they're in a encrypted format on an encrypted hard drive and you're just well protected because, again, we're seeing so many uh, vulnerabilities and breaches that are happening more and more that we need to take the, the steps to secure or implement as much security as we can I and mean, create these barriers that well these hackers have to overcome so that's kind of my concepts my ideas my strategies as I'm starting to learn uh, I'm really excited about that so that's it for today's video I just want to keep it short not too long uh, I'm really excited again for all your support and everything comment below I just like to hear your feedback because I, again I learned from you as much as you hopefully you learn from me so that's it for today's video don't forget Software is hackable, being connected is vulnerable. I'll see you next video.